Okay, uh, the meeting does. Meeting of the Springfield Planning Board is now in session. Uh, Mr. Dromey, could you please call the roll? Uh, again, just for the record, this is for the October 6, 2021 meeting. Uh, Mr. Cunningham? I don't see him absent. Mr. Minio? Here. Mr. Danielli? Here. Ms. Warren? Here. Ms. Filippo is absent. Mr. Florian? Here. Uh, Ms. McQuaid? Mm -hmm. Jennifer was here. Um, I don't see her. Oh, there's um, and Miss Choi here. And uh, back to uh, Mr. Cunningham here. And we do have a quorum. Um, before we get started, uh, could I get a motion on the minutes of October sixth? Or actually, the meeting, the minutes are for August 18th. Move to approve. Second. Okay. I believe that's all the minutes that we have. Okay, Mr. I think Green, I only did, you want, said. did you want to explain the process? Yeah, if I could do. I could just uh, just just a reminder for folks that may be watching the meeting. Um, due to the, the requirements of, of the Zoom meetings we're holding, the planning board process is now a two-step process for all new items being heard tonight. Uh, the, the applicants will have the opportunity to present to the board. The board will then have the opportunity to ask questions, um, but the item will not be voted on tonight. The item will be continued. The meeting will then be uh, aired on Focus Springfield uh, tomorrow and um, abutters who are not able to participate in the Zoom meeting will have the opportunity to view the meeting. And then if, if they deem they would like to, they're allowed to then comment on the meeting um, uh, that will, the next meeting, which will be held on November 3rd, any comments we receive um, during that in, uh, prior to the next meeting will be read into the record and then the items will be voted on uh, on the November 3rd meeting. Um, so on that note, we do have one item that was continued from the previous meeting, which was the zone change for 797 Berkshire Avenue. Um, I did receive an email from the uh, petitioner who has indicated he is still working with the engineer to come up with the plan he spoke about last time. So he has asked that this item be continued again so if I could just get a, a vote from the board or a motion uh, to continue this and then a vote, we will. I will put this back on on the November 3rd and hopefully he'll be ready to proceed then, but I'm not 100% he's gonna be ready. Uh, the plan may take a little longer than he anticipated, so. Can we get a motion on that? We'll make a motion to continue the hearing. Second. Uh, All in favor? Oh, we'll, go ahead, roll call. Yeah, I do gotta do a roll call. Voting to continue zone change. 3225, uh, Mr. Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Minio? Yes. Mr. Danielli? Yes. Ms. Morin? Yes. D. Filippo absent. Mr. Florian? Yes. Uh, Ms. Quaid? Yes. And Ms. Choi? Yes. So that item will be continued until November 3rd. Um, so moving on on the agenda under public hearings new, we have a liquor license, an all alcoholic uh, liquor license request for 497 Belmont Avenue. Uh, the petitioner Ampola Bakery and Bistro LLC doing business as Bori Chino. Okay. Is there anybody here tonight to speak in favor of this petition? Yes, uh, good evening, Mr. Florian, uh, Attorney Kelly on behalf of the petitioner. Ms. Hernandez was also on this call, as well as uh, the manage, proposed manager, uh, who shows up with Mr. Romero on this call. So, so who would like to speak first? <laughs> I'll speak first. Um, this is a proposal for a new restaurant um, at the old lo uh, location that Typical Sicilian was located at. So um, I'm sure everyone has probably been inside and is familiar with the, uh, the area. Um, 
you'll essentially see no changes, cause significant changes to the inside of the restaurant. There'll be some minor cosmetic changes in terms of painting and some decor. But what I really mean is the, the bar will stay exactly where it was when they closed. The seating area will be exactly where it was when they closed. The, the bathrooms, the kitchen, all of that will be exactly the same if you come in to this restaurant. Um, just to give you the idea, this restaurant is um, a new um, idea that's uh, coming around. It's called Puerto Rican sushi. So let me just tell you what that is. It's not actually sushi, but it's close. So think about when you have a sushi roll, you have the, the fish and the avocado, whatever you like inside, then you have the, the roll outside. This will still have the roll outside, except it'll be, um, you know, Puerto Rican rice. Um, and then on the inside will be the different meats and, and you know, meat, pork, chicken um, cooked in a Puerto Rican style um, that everybody likes. So it won't be fish, but it'll be meat um, as sushi. I've attached the menu to the application. There'll be other, uh, you know, Puerto Rican Spanish type foods that you can order as well. But to be clear, the focus is going to be on that type of sushi. Um, it's a popular um, idea on the island of Puerto Rico with both the locals and with tourists, and it is coming up to the, to the uh, Continental 48 here. As a local um, establishment that currently serves it, uh, Mr. Romero, who's on this call, who is the proposed manager of this new restaurant, happens to own a very similar restaurant. It is operating in the food court at Eastfield Mall. So if you want to get an idea of what the food offerings will be the type of what I if I hopefully I describe it artfully enough where you can understand it but if you just want to go and try it or see it in person you can go to the food court at Eastfield Mall and you'll probably see him there serving it to you so that's the the idea it's going to be a restaurant it's not going to be a nightclub it's not going to be a bar as you can see from our proposed hours we're only asking to be open till midnight because they'll be closed hopefully a little before that anyway um, I don't think they'll expect to be open till midnight during the week anyway but um, we expect that, that was the best time to ask for a closing time. Um, we've met with the neighborhood council. Went well, it was favorable. We, we got a favorable recommendation from them. Um, the owners of the restaurant, uh, Mr. Hernandez and her husband, have owned other restaurants in the area. They owned Bullseye and Chickabee recently, uh, which closed due to COVID. You may remember years ago on Worthington Street, a restaurant called Virtuoso. Um, they owned Virtuoso, ran Virtuoso for a number of years down there. Um, and Mr. Uh, Romero here, Sedena, is familiar with liquor serving and also operates uh, the food court restaurant at the Eastfield Mall. So it's a new restaurant um, and an old building that's housed a restaurant forever. It's got a new concept and uh, we're hoping that the planning board will look favorable on Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to speak in favor of this? Mr. Romero, did you want to say anything or? I'm sorry, was that directed to me, Mr. Florian? No, you, you said Mr. Uh, Romero was here? Did he, oh, yes. was he looking to say anything? He's the manager, no, not unless you have a direct question. Okay, well, then we'll open that up. Are there any board members that have questions for on this? I just have one question about the parking. It says nine spots. Do you think that's enough? Well, I think it'll be just like typical. Um, yeah, okay. It wasn't enough for typical. I don't um, when, when they were going well. So I, I think it's it's they expect to have a crowd similar to typical. If you've been there before, you know the nine spots are the ones right outside the door. But on the street and across the street, they had agreements with that business and this. And we're looking to do the same. I think the parking will be exactly the same as uh, typical mm -hmm. Sicilian had. And as you may remember, typical Sicilian rarely, if ever, had a night when they weren't at full capacity at five hundred one. Right. Okay. So I guess that answers my question as well. You're going to try and make an arrangement across the street similar to um, what, uh, where most of the cars parked? Similar to what the Mori family um, had, yes. Okay. I mean, we usually ask a lot of questions about experience and stuff, but um, it seems that they've got the experience in the background. Any other questions? Okay. I, I've seen Mr. Dromi have provided me with the planning um, department's analysis and uh, we're in agreement with everything on there. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're certainly, we're certainly happy to see a restaurant go back into that location. Uh, so it's like a great, great idea. 
if there's no more questions on this, then I guess we'll entertain a motion to continue, Phil? Yes. So I'll move to continue. Okay, Rosemary and then Marty second. Second. Okay. So let me just call the roll here, voting to continue uh, the liquor license for 497 Belmont Avenue. Mr. Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Minio? Yes. Mr. Daniele? Yes. Ms. Morris? Yes. Ms. Filippo absent. Mr. Florian? Yes. Ms. McQuaid? Yes. And Ms. Choi? Yes. So this, this item will be continued until uh, November 3rd. Thank you, Attorney Kelly. Thank you. Just, uh, Chairman Florian, can I just ask a question? So do we log on for the uh, November 3rd meeting too, or how, how does it work? Yeah, I, I, I'll send you a link there just in okay. case, you know, we, we may receive comments on this. So okay. in case we do, someone should be here just to be able to address them in case those come up. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, thank Mr. Tell me the next item on the agenda. Yeah, under public hearings new, uh, an all alcoholic liquor license for 750 Boston Road, petitioner MLNJ LLC doing business as Marley's Joint. Okay. Is there anybody here to speak in favor of this petition? Uh, Van Johnson, I'm here as counsel uh, for MLNJ LLC. Um, my client, um, Jodian St. George, the manager of MLNJ LLC, is also on the call. Okay. Thank you. Well, then, would you like to explain exactly what you're what you're looking to do? Oh, gladly. Um, MLNJ LLC um, purchased the property located at 750 Boston Road back in June of this year. Um, I work with MLNJ LLC on the purchase or the acquisition of the property. Um, the intent at the time of the purchase was um, to um, reopen um, the establishment at 750 Boston Road as Marley's, uh, at the time Marley's joint, the name has since changed to Marley's. Um, it will be a, full, a, a restaurant, restaurant slash bar, um, not very, not all to, altogether different than what was current, what was um, at the at the, uh, at the location before, which was Maddie's Cafe. Um, the difference will be, in addition to um, the restaurant and bar, uh, will be a banquet facility. Um, the intention there is to is to use the property for multiple uses, not just as a restaurant and bar, but also as a banquet facility. Um, the as you can see from the from the plan, there are 14 parking spots. Um, not the the development has been ongoing since purchase. Um, of the property, um, and we have, have also submitted um, the menu because it is a restaurant. We've also submitted the menu in addition to um, the proposed um, license request. I, I did email that out the menu. If, you, if, if the board wants, I can I can bring that up if you if the board. Yeah, I, I didn't receive it. Yeah, I, I didn't get it till this afternoon, late this afternoon. So I, I mean, if you want, let me let me just uh, let me try and bring this up here. Uh, Miss St. George is is on the is on the call and has um, has managed other facilities and I wanted to give her an opportunity to speak to her own personal experience. Can you guys see that? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'll just slowly scroll down. That's the... Is that good for you guys? Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. And you said it was Miss St. George. Uh, she's here. And yes. so would you like to speak? Hello. Um, besides what's on the menu, there'll be appetizers, but that's the gist of the menu. Um, I had a restaurant on um, Cottage Street for the last two years. Um, that it's going to be, a, it was a seafood restaurant. Um, and now at um, Marley's Place, it's going to be a little bit different um, just because the seafood's so high and so expensive. Um, I wouldn't be able to bring it at a, um, a favorable cost to um, patrons. So we changed our menu up a little bit. Um, we did 
fairly well um, on Cottage Street. The only problem was there's now there is um, construction, which kind of um, shut me down um, for the last six months. There's been construction that you can't even get on or off Cottage Street without um, a 20 minute wait. So that was, and um, I would like, I wanted to expand. I started from a food truck, um, then I got the um, brick and mortar, and now I'm looking for a, the, um, with the bar, just to um, expand my revenue. Okay. Before we take questions from the board, is there anybody else here to speak on this position? Okay, are there any questions from the board? It, it's Rosemary. So is this the same restaurant you were running and you're moving it? Or is this an addition or it's a different restaurant or? It's going to be a little bit different. There's a lot of me menu items from the, um, sorry, the previous restaurant. Um, but it was a seafood restaurant, as I said, and now this won't be a seafood restaurant. It will be um, more of comfort food. Okay. So the other one is closed down. This is a brand new restaurant. Correct. Okay. And and you ran the other one for how long? What's your two experience? Years. Two years. Um, the brick and mortar has been open. And before that, I ran a food truck. Okay. One, and your one. staff, as far as training, with because the bar seems to be new to you, from what you said, or running a bar is part of it? Running the bar is part of it. Um, I've been a bartender for about 25 years. Um, in between nurse, I'm also a nurse, um, but I've also kept a bartending job. So I'm TIP certified. Um, I'm safe serve certified. I um, I do know about um, staffing. All of my pe all of my um, employees will be TIP certified um, in order okay. to work. Did you have something to say? I'd just like to say one, one, one little thing is you, we come on here to, to, to open until 1 a.m. Is it possible you close at midnight? I'm looking to capture um, the, the, the late night crowd um, with, with the food and um, alcohol. Um, Boston Road is, uh, most of it is commercial. Um, the only one that is not commercial is right behind me. Um, both to the left, the right in front of me are commercial, right behind me um, isn't commercial, but I have talked to, I've actually went out and reached out to the community. Um, I asked, I have recommendations and um, referrals from um, the house behind me and other people that live, other houses on Harvey Street um, about the noise. If, you know, I know Maddie's was open before till 2 a.m. Um, if they had a concern and they actually said they didn't have a concern to be open till 2 a.m. or 1 a.m. Um, the house behind me has signed, also signed and said he also, he also owns the um, gas station on the side of me. Um, and he said he wouldn't have any objection. I can't control, but I would do my best. Um, I did a late night food truck, which was open till 2 a.m. And I had no act downtown and I had absolutely no problems in front of my or around the whole time I was down there. Just because I have pretty good um, knowledge of crowd control because I have bartended for 25 years. Just to, to clarify, you're applying for a 2 a.m. Right. closing, correct? Not one correct. recall, a 2 a.m. closing. Okay. And I think the recommendation of the planning department, at least to start off with, would be one o'clock. How, how, how do you feel about that? Um, I, I'm not objecting to the 1 a.m. I would prefer 2 a.m. Um, probably on Friday and Saturday just because um, there isn't anything around for food open at that, except for the fast food right across the street, um, which does get pretty good traffic. Um, Burger King and McDonald's get a lot of traffic because they're open. Um, I would like to capture that. But I do understand if I don't and I have to, you know, show that there's nothing, you know, that that the crowd that I'm I'm looking to seek, which is an older crowd, I'm looking for an older um, 
but you know, everybody's welcome, but it's looking for older, older, older crowd of people probably to patronize as, um, for libations, um, for food, you know, there'll be probably anybody that will come in, but for libations, you know, it will be an older, hopefully an older crowd. And I would just like to say to the other board members, you know, when we're looking at these, um, you know, liquor license, alcoholic license, it's specifically for land use. It's does this parcel make sense for alcohol to be served? You know, the issue, I and mean, we've run about this a million times, but the issues about hours, closing times, that stuff is really outside our purview. It, it should really be left in uh, the hands of the license commission. Thank you. Agreed. Phil, did you get anything like from, is it the Pine Point Neighborhood Council? I, I can speak to that if I could. We did we did reach out to the Pine Point um, Neighborhood Council. I did exchange emails with Mr. Lysak. Um, he indicated that they, they weren't meeting over the summer. I think he had had some um, issues. He wasn't able to, um, to, to maybe to move some things forward. Um, but we made ourselves available. Um, he said he would reach out to his board and let me know, get back to me with scheduling something. That has not happened as of yet, but we make we will certainly make ourselves available for that. But we did make that. We've been um, we reached out several times to make that try to make that happen. Thank you. You'd also said something about I think some of the neighbors. Did we get anything from the neighbors supporting it? I mean, I I, not, I have not received any anything for or against. So um. okay. Uh, this question is is for for Peter. Um, the the previous business, Maddie's. I mean, did that have? I mean, that had a a full liquor license, correct? Yes. And did we have any like previous issues with uh, the abutters or anything the, about that noise complaints? Anything? No. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Hey. If there are no other questions, then I will look for a motion to continue this hearing. Make a motion to continue the hearing. Second. Second. Bill? Yeah, voting to continue liquor license at 750 Boston Road, Mr. Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Minio? Yes. Mr. Daniele? Yes. Ms. Morin? Yes. Ms. Filippo absent. Mr. Florian? Yes. Ms. McQuaid? Yes. And Ms. Choi? Yes. Okay, the motion uh, was passed and uh, this will be back on the agenda on November 3rd. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, okay the uh, final public hearing tonight is for zone change number 3226. Um, the address is 8 Florence Street, and it's a proposed zone change from residence B to residence C, Petitioner Whitest Properties, LLC. Okay. Anybody here to speak in favor of this? Please state your name and address. Hello, all. Uh, my name is Alex. We're at uh, 195 Christopher Terrace. This is Jason Whitus. Hello. Okay. So why don't you tell us exactly what you're here for on this uh, zone change, what you're looking to do? Yeah, great. Uh, so we're just looking to change the zoning to allow for multifamily housing. Uh, we're intentionally going to place nine one bedroom units into the building and uh, renovate it. And, uh, you know, just bring the whole property up to speed, make a lot of updates and uh, hopefully rent it out, you know? So there's a lot of work that needs to be done, but we've had some good uh, success with other apartments of this size and, uh, you know, managing them with various uh, people in the city, you know, like organizations, or we're looking at maybe college, uh, it's close to Springfield College as well. Uh, we're just looking to, you know, allow for the uh, transition into a multifamily housing unit. Okay. Is there anybody else here to speak in favor of this? I mean, just, Leo, just so you, I think it, it was included in my analysis. There, there was a letter from the uh, Maple High Six Corners neighborhood 
supporting the, the proposed change. So I, I'm pretty sure I included that in, in my package to you guys. Okay. Yep, I, I did see that. Okay, any questions from the board? Yeah, I have a, a question. I think this might be more directed at Phil than anybody. Um, but do they have a, a, enough parking spaces based on you know the the building size or square footage? Are they are they meeting what they're supposed to in terms of you know the amount of parking that they need to have on site? Yeah, I, I did a calculation for the parking requirements. I don't have it off the top of my head, but they they do meet it. I mean, and the site plan that was submitted, it does appear that they could probably get a couple more. Um, you know, obviously, I, I I defer to the building department once the once they get their CO, they'll they'll do the final. But again, one bedroom units only. I think require one space per unit. So. Um, I think they, I think they needed 10 or 11 and they have uh, 13, I, I believe. So they, Thank you. Yeah. I mean, if this is to the, the petitioner, if there's any way you can add spots, I mean, that would, you know, be a really good thing. You know, on street parking is really lacking. I know there's no parking on central street and I'm not sure about pine street. Um, obviously uh, that little section of Florence, you can have some on street parking, but um, you know, the reality is, you know, while you might, you know, zoning wise, you need one spot per unit. Um, you know, you're probably going to have some couples that are going to have a couple vehicles. So if you can get some more parking in there um, to get the cars off the street, um, that would be great. Yeah, on the um, east side of the building, there is a unpaved parking uh, driveway. We're going to put asphalt down there. And uh, yeah, the original plan had drawn up 13 uh, parking spaces. And then um, when we had Stephen Roberts draw us up this plan, he was a bit more conservative and put in 11 parking spaces within the ADA space. Uh, there is, you know, a pretty large parking um, lot adjacent to the building. Okay, it's good to hear. Thank you. This is, this is Rosemary. Um, I live around the corner from this property and this property has always been a nightmare. It's always been a mess. It's not looking any better now than it did a year or two or three years ago. I misread, when you said nine units, I thought you were looking to do six units in the property. Um, when I was reading this, it's still not clear to me, but you wanna do nine units? Yeah, we wanna do nine one bedroom units, uh, definitely clean up the whole entire place, interior and exterior. Uh, on the interior, it's going to be brought down to just the stone walls and the wood frame and completely redone. Uh, new plumbing and electrical going in, uh, repave, you know, pave the east side of the driveway, repave, refinish the west side, uh, really just kind of upkeep the property. We do know the uh, owner, uh, Peter, is, uh, you know, sometimes not the best in the maintenance. So that's what we come in and we're going to bring that up to speed. And, you know, we, um, uh, geez, it was this, the, the cop that um, owns the two other brick uh, buildings across the street there, uh, Francisco, I think it was, I can't think of his name, um, but I, I spoke with him and he was a good guy and he, he thought, uh, you know, it's, he had good success with those buildings and we were hoping that we would as well. Yeah, he has good success because he's very strict on who he rents to and all. What is your experience renting and your background? The issue we have in the neighborhood is people who come in do rentals and they don't have the experience, they don't have the background or they don't care who they rent to. And then it just goes downhill from there. So what is your background? Yeah, so um, uh, Jason, uh, one of the partners of the company is a um, you know, uh, CSL holder, um, does construction full-time um, for you know some big companies. And uh, we have an 18 unit, bedroom, uh, 18 bedroom unit that's been rented to Center for Human Development for almost two years now. Where's we, that? It's on Belmont Avenue at the corner of Eldridge, just uh, north of the X heading into East Long Meadow. And then we have a four unit uh, down on Greenwich Street off of Main Street that's rented out to Wayfinders. Um, so Center for Human Development said they would definitely take this. We're going to make the first floor ADA compliant so it can be used for wheelchairs um, and then, you know, the other two floors will be ADA friendly. It's going to have a commercial sprinkler system, fire alarm system, uh, everything that we need for that, all the clearances. Um, we redid Belmont, um, the first floor of that to make it ADA compliant for CHD. So are all the units going to be rented by CHD? Uh, well, 
if yeah, that's typically if they're going to take any, they would take the whole entire building from us. Uh, so it's either we're going to go that route, or you know, that's most likely. If we were going to do private rentals, we would obviously vet uh, vet the um, you know tenants very well, just make sure that it's financially feasible for them to afford a you know newly renovated unit um, without us having any issues as well. Um, a lot of people in our family have been into rentals for many decades. And you said Wayfinders on Greenwich, do they have all the units over there? Yes. Uh, I, I have a couple of questions. So I know you, you're you renting it out to somebody else. So they're responsible for housing the tenants and then you would be responsible for the parcels, maintenance and upkeep? Yes. And uh, one last thing, I, I caught your addresses but what towns are you guys located in uh we're right in west springfield next to bear hole okay so you're local. So, yeah but you're the ones that are responsible for the actual upkeep of the outside in the building and all not yeah. chg not wayfinders okay yeah we we manage the other one uh you know we all the shoveling landscaping uh, roofs, all that major, uh, any major, you know, building requirement. Okay. Any other questions? Any other board members? Okay. If not, then we'll entertain a motion to continue. I'll make um, a motion to continue. Okay. Second. So. Yes, uh, voting to continue zone change number 3226. Mr. Cunningham? Yes. Mr. Minio? Yes. Mr. Daniele? Yes. Ms. Morin? Yes. Ms. Filippo absent. Mr. Florian? Yes. Ms. McQuaid? Yes. And Ms. Choi? Yes. Okay, this, this, uh, this will also be continued to the November 3rd planning board hearing. Thank right. you guys. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay. Okay. So um, I think the only other, oh, I, I, I think Alvin, just, just to kind of get this out of the way, Alvin sent you a, uh, a new force. I see Laura's on the call as well. Laura Walls from the Parks Department. Um, Laura may be better to talk about this. This just, just for the process wise, um, when, when I think we've done a couple of these so far, when, when the CPA uh, gives money to individuals for projects they fund, uh, specifically for historic uh, work that's being done for buildings or homes or, or, or renovation work, they require that the building um, uh, become a local historic district. So as part of the process, the planning board you don't, you don't need to vote on this. It's just a, it, the plan has to be submitted to the board as part of the overall creation of the local historic district. So Laura, if, if you just wanna to touch on what you guys are doing over there. Oh, sure. Thank you everybody. I'm Laura Welsh, a project manager with the park department. Thank you for having me tonight. Um, hi, Laura. Uh, hi everybody. Hi so, Laura. <laughs> Um, you probably are familiar with the uh, trolley barn, also known the known as the waiting pavilion. It's right there at the front entrance of Forest Park on Sumner Ave. Um, and this structure is original to um, 1897 is when it was installed. And it was originally, it's called the waiting pavilion because that's where people would wait for the trolleys that came up from downtown to bring people to the park. So it really um, has been iconic in the park department and a symbol of Forest Park uh, since it was built in the 1800s. And we're looking to preserve it and um, make sure that it's here for everyone to enjoy for another 100 plus years. So the Park Department and the Forest Park neighborhood applied for a CPA grant in 2019 to develop uh, restoration plans for the pavilion. We were successful in that grant application and have been working on developing construction plans uh, over the, the course of uh, last year was a little bit delayed with COVID, but we're rolling now. And um, we have plans developed by Steve Jablonski Architects. Um, but the actual work, which is very exciting, is going to be um, 
implemented by students from Putnam Vocational Technical High School, um, overseen by their, prof their professor, but also our master carpenter. And all um, preservation treatments are going to follow the, uh, as mandated uh, with historic properties. It will follow the Secretary of Interior's treatment for historic properties. So um, it's a beautiful structure now. It did need some help. There has been some vandalism over the years, um, but that's you know expected over a hundred years um, and it's really in, in great shape. So we're gonna be fixing the floors, the ceiling, some of the trim, looking at the roof, uh, looking at some ways we can actively program that space um, and just really bring it uh, to the forefront. Some of the landscaping has been removed so you can see the trolley barn a little bit better. Um, and we're going through the process now to have it designated a local historic district. The district will only apply to the actual structure and is not, um, it won't be for the whole of Forest Park. It's just for this uh, one building. So that is, that's where we're at now. We've um, sent this, we met with the Springfield Historic Commission uh, for their approval and we've passed it on to um, Mass Historic as well. So we're just waiting um, for their comments. And I believe hopefully in December, we would be up for the their actual decision. That's, that's what we got. Thank you, Laura. You're welcome. So yeah, so again, this doesn't require an actual vote from the board. It's just, it's, it's an informational process. Um, it, it will, it does require uh, obviously the Mass Historical Commission to approve. And then I think ultimately the city council needs to vote on on it as well. So that will happen at a later date. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So I, I just have a, a few A and R plans. Um, if you guys can bear with me one second. You can run through these. Just let me know if you can see those. Yep. So this is this is uh, a, a property on Stevens Street. It's actually a vacant city-owned parcel that's adjacent to it. So as part of the sale, the, the 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 buyer is required to combine the two lots. So they're they're just getting rid of the lot line in the middle. So it's two lots becoming one. Okay. Move to approve. Move, move to Second. approve. Second. And I would just take a voice vote on this if you can all. Okay. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Okay, the next one again is a, um, an easy one. It's just, uh, this is on Clarion Street. Um, again, it's, it's currently two parcels. Um, the lot line down the middle will be removed um, and become one parcel. Okay, we have a motion on that. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the ayes have it. Um, again, another kind of straightforward one on the corner of Ledyard Street, Liberty Street. Again, it's, it's currently two parcels. Um, I think it's currently being assessed as, as two. So they're, they're just, again, removing the lot line in the middle and it would become one larger lot. Bill, is it all the owner, the same owner right now? They're just two parcels? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think you can see his garage on here, so. Yeah, I do. That's why I was wondering. Yeah, you must be getting two tax bills currently, and now it, it'll it'll be one. Okay. A motion to approve. Move to approve. So moved. So okay. moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Hi. 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 Um, and this is uh, I, actually three lots that are being combined into one. So again, these are all owned. By the same person, they're just they're just combining them into one larger parcel. Where is that? It's right by Van Horn Park. Over by Van Horn, okay. Yeah, it's, I was gonna say, yeah, I think that's a, yeah, I think that's Van Horn. Okay, wasn't an area or streets that I recognized. Okay. Move, Move to, to approve. approve. Okay. So have a second. 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 Oh. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, this one is actually the uh, uh, the 
Pride gas station on, on the corner of State Street and Thompson Street. They're actually just cutting out. It, it, this is the gas station here. If you can see my, the new, it, this was just recently constructed about a year or so ago. Um, there was a building located on this lot known as B2, but they originally had combined all these parcels together. They're now cutting this, this lot out on the corner of, of Westminster Street and creating lot B2. Um, it is zoned uh, business, so I, I'm assuming he must have a, a tenant that he's going to construct a, a smaller commercial building there. So it was all merged and now they want to separate it? Yeah, I think this this was originally this was all going to be part of his development, but I'm I'm assuming okay. I'm assuming he's he always talked about he would get some type of tenant there. So I'm assuming he's he's got somebody that they're looking to build some a commercial building there. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And this is another pride gas station up on Avocado Street and, and West Street. Um, this is this is the this is the Pride gas station. Uh, I think there used to be an old radio station here. The tower is actually still there. Um, this is Riverfront Park, uh, right along the Connecticut River, where the the uh, PV with the Pioneer Valley boating house is. So uh, they're they're just basically doing some re reconfigurations of all these lots. So um, I'm assuming he must have some development plans for here. Um, so it's it's basically just just a just a it's kind of hard to see on this plan, but it's it's just a reconfiguration of the existing parcels. Okay, move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, and lastly, uh, this is a parcel up in Indian Orchard. Um, it's currently three parcels. There's the parcel here. There's a small parcel here, and then there's a parcel in the back. Um, he's combining them all into one larger parcel. I believe he wants to, this is actually a house that was built years and years ago. He's actually looking to build a garage. So he, he needed to combine these parcels in order to build a garage. Okay. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so that's all the business we have tonight. Um, again, uh, we'll have the items, the liquor license and the zone changes for the November 3rd hearing. We also, or I'm sorry, it's not November 3rd. It's, I've been saying the wrong date. It's actually October 20th that these will come back. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I tell the petitioner it's not November 3rd. I don't know why I got that wrong. But also just to let the board know, we, we will also be having a subdivision, um, which is, uh, up on uh, right off of Allen Street, right behind the stop and shop there. We, we did a preliminary approval about a year ago. They're coming back for a formal approval. I had to advertise it because the time for the planning board to review it had run out. I don't know whether or not we're gonna actually be voting on it because I, I, we're still waiting for DPW comments. And then ultimately, you know, they're actually crossing wetlands on this proposed development. So. I'm still waiting for approval, you know, some comments from uh, the Conservation Commission. So I've let the developer know if, if I don't receive those, you know, I'm, I, I won't ask the board to approve something when, we, you know, we don't have kind of the, at least the preliminary approvals from both those departments. So, but it will be on the agenda. So I, I, I'm assuming we're gonna be getting comments from that, we usually do for subdivisions. But um, other than that, I, I think we're, we're all set if we could just get a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. <laughs>